Hey, welcome to the shop. Today, we're gonna go over everything that you need to know to get professional results when you MIG weld aluminum, including technique, machine setup, and how to get your settings dialed in just right. And I even tried my hand at making a little animation, so look out for that and let me know what you think down below. Now, when we get into this, I'm kind of assuming that you have some amount of experience or uh, background with MIG welding, but if you don't, that's just fine. I listed three videos down in the description below, and there may be some others that I'll add along the way that are going to introduce you to all of the basics that you need to know to have a good foundation. So after we finish here, go ahead and review those. And if you haven't tuned in before, I'm Tim. I'm a welding engineer and I make videos from my side hustle shop in my garage here. So be sure to check out the other videos and subscribe if you want to learn more that will up your game in welding and fabrication. Now let's get started. So the first challenge with MIG welding aluminum is a practical one and it's just the wire is really soft and so it's harder to feed and you can get away with using the standard feeding mechanism if you keep your lead straight and you're not doing very much but a better option is to use a spool gun like this and this is what we're going to use um, to do it. There's also higher production uh, options called a push-pull gun but we'll use the spool gun here and it has the uh, same connector essentially is my regular MIG gun, so I can just pull the MIG gun out and plug it in here, but there are several different kinds available, uh, such as this one I just picked up from Harbor Freight, and I'm going to be testing this out, and I'll post a review uh, coming up about uh, how well this works, but it has a separate gas connection, so you'll just have to look at the uh, instructions for your particular gun. However, here I'm just going to pull out my standard MIG gun and um, then plug in the spool gun right here and I put a little bit of uh, Vaseline, just a tiny amount on those O-rings to help them slide in and, and seal uh, really well on it. Then I'll connect my uh, trigger and feeder here and I should be ready to go. Now the type of gas that you'll use here is uh, going to be straight argon and that's different than the blends that most MIG welding requires. And I'm going to turn it up to 35 CFH which is more than I usually use. Now when you're MIG welding steel, uh, you'll have what's called a short circuit transfer like this. So your wire will extend it out, it'll uh, touch the workpiece, an arc will start, and it will burn back until it goes out. And so that's what you're looking for when you're MIG welding steel, and that's not what we're going to be looking for MIG welding aluminum. So here is just an example of MIG welding steel you might be familiar with. Now contrast that with this. Uh, what's called spray transfer where the wire will contact once but then you set your wire feed speed and your voltage uh, to work together so that you maintain that steady arc all the time and it should look something like this when you get it dialed in and I'm going to show you how to dial it in there. So these are the factory settings, uh, what they recommend, and for this 1 8 inch material I'm looking at, they recommend using a setting of 5 and 70, which are relative settings on this machine, but you could use actual inches per minute and volts on yours. However, I'm going to set my wire speed to 70 and leave that there, but my voltage, instead of setting to 5, I'm actually going to dial it back to 3 because if you turn your voltage up too high, you'll arc back into your contact tip, and this is the worst one I've ever done. But I've found it's better to start with low voltage and know it's not gonna run well and then just sneak up on the actual voltage I want. So here it is, you can see it's short circuiting out, it's transferring in those big globules. I'm just playing it one more time, and, and that's not what we want, so I know it's low and that's good. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit to three and a half here, and let's go ahead and run that. Now that is better, better, but you can still see those big globules transferring off. So I'm not quite there yet. You know, watch just one more time here, uh, the way that that's running erratically. I know I'm gonna need to go a little higher in voltage. So I'll turn it up to four and let's see how this runs. So uh, it's running pretty good right here and uh, moving right along we'll watch it just one more time and this is what you're looking for and I know that five would have been too high so those are the settings we'll use but if you needed to get less heat because you were burning through you just turn your wire speed down and go through the process again uh, on the other hand if you needed more heat you just turn your wire speed up and dial it in there but we'll just go with those settings that we settled in with now as far as welding technique I'm going to use a long uh, stick out or distance between my gun and the work piece and that'll be about three quarters of an inch and then for my angle in this t-joint the fillet weld here I'm gonna go 45 degrees right into the joint and then in the direction I'm traveling I'm actually gonna point the front of the gun in the direction I'm traveling in a push angle like that and that's gonna work out well 
Now an important thing to remember here, at least with a lot of machines that don't have advanced controls, like mine doesn't have uh, advanced controls for aluminum, uh, is it'll arc and pop when you first start. And if you noticed, I started far away. Now I'll show you this a few times here. So I had a long arc right in the beginning. And so see, it's a long arc and then it settles back down. So I actually hold my torch a little over an inch away. Watch one more time, it burns back and then it shortens up. So here you'll see I'll hold it a little more than an inch. Once that arc starts, I'll move in and then I'll hold that three quarter of an inch long distance between my gun and workpiece. Now as far as motion goes, I like to use a stitching back and forth uh, type motion like this. And that just helps me keep pace, but you can just run a constant steady stringer across instead and that'll work just fine. So we'll just watch it one more time. You can see it's moving across and you can see there's a little bit of black soot uh, being deposited there. And what that is, is it's not contamination. It's actually um, some of the aluminum and some of the alloying elements of the aluminum that get deposited on the material after they uh, vaporize and react with oxygen. So. Um, it's really not a big issue if you have a little bit of it, but if you get everything running just right, then you can get rid of most of that. And here I'm, I'm running another bead and I'm actually holding a little bit less stick out or a little, my gun is a little closer to the workpiece. And that is keeping the, the shielding working a little more effectively. So I got just a little carried away with my gun angle and I think that was the issue. But it can be many different things. And if you get a little bit of deposit, as long as you brush it off, it's not, not a big deal. But uh, this is coming out pretty clean here. We'll watch just one more time. And you notice that, uh, that clean metal and the rippled appearance that I'm getting. And right there at the start, um, it took a second if, if you noticed to get established where I was bridging between both plates. So don't start running along until you have a pool that is, uh, you know, washed up on both plates. And then you can start moving along like this. And once everything's running good, um, you can see the result is pretty nice here. And this is without any cleaning. So there is still a little bit of that black deposit outside of the weld zone. And it's really hard to get away from any of that uh, on an aluminum weld. You're gonna have some, but uh, overall pretty good result. All right, well now we've gone over everything that you need to know to get started MIG welding aluminum. So if you liked this, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and check out the other videos linked in the description if you want to learn more about MIG welding. And if you want to learn more about welding and fabrication in general, go ahead and click that subscribe and I'll be sure to send videos your way with helpful tips and hints along the way. And we'll see you next time.